What's going on everyone? Welcome back to part two of improving your Python code. I thought the first video was well received, so I'm making a second video now. And I'm just gonna quickly introduce three ways you can help make your Python code better, more elegant, more professional, impress people. And if you guys watched the first video, uh, this is just essentially a continuation from that. We're gonna go over the, some PEP8 standards that I think are really easy to incorporate in your code, especially as a beginner. If you did not, I'm gonna link it right here. And so go watch that before you do, and let's get started into part two, let's get it. Okay, point number one, straight into it. Use enumerate over range when you can. So as you can see in this example here, oftentimes beginners will find themselves doing something like this, where they loop through a array, and they also want the index of that array, so they use range and they index back into the array. So if we go ahead and run this, I want the, the student number and the students, and I'm just printing them one by one, okay? But as opposed to doing that, the, the Python community realized that this was a little clumsy, so they created something called enumerate that solves this problem and makes it more concise. So as opposed to using this range here, we're just gonna say enumerate, okay? And then we're just going to do student name. So enumerate unpacks it for us as opposed to us having to go back into the list and get the index. So I can just delete that. I save a line of code there. And I can go ahead and run this and get exactly the same thing I had before, as you could see. And what's also nice about enumerate is I can start from a specific index in the list. So I can start at one, and it'll still give me the same students in the same order. So as opposed to adding one here, I added one just so we don't get an awkward zero. We can't have student zero, that doesn't make sense. So now I can just start at I. So thankfully, due to the enumerate's capability, I could start at one and still get all the students in the array. Okay, perfect. So I get the same thing cleaner, much more elegant. Thank the Python community for coming up with that. And I just wanna know that beginners, please try to use this as much as you can. It's really a much more professional way to go about this. And you have the capability to start at any index you want, which is nice as well. So do that, make your code better, and let's go into point number two. Okay, point number two, try to use zip to process iterators in parallel when you can. And the reason I'm saying this is because in Python, we often find ourselves working with many lists of related objects. And those related objects essentially a lot of the times have the same length. And for those of you guys who don't know what zip is, it's something I started to incorporate recently and I think it's a really powerful way to solve this problem where we're going through two lists. As you can see here, we have the students, we have the name lengths. They're both the same length lists. They just have different information that are related to one another. And we have a program here that's going through that information and it's giving us the student with the longest name length and it's also printing out the name length. So let's go ahead and run that and just show you what it gets on the bottom here. As you can see, it gets Mahmoud Shilla name length 15. Let me clear this, start fresh. But it gets Mahmoud Shilla name length 15. And I'm not really happy with this for loop right now because we did something a little clumsily here. What we did was we use enumerate, which is smart of us to use enumerate, as you saw in point number one, to get the index of the first list and the student name from the first list. But we use the index to access the second list. So now there's actually a work around to make this even cleaner. We have this functionality called zip that essentially solves this problem when we have two lists of the same length that we want to go through at the same time. So as opposed to using enumerate, I'm gonna show you how this works simply with by using zip. So we're gonna zip students and na name lengths. So we have, we're accessing both iterators here at the same time with zip, which is nice. And I'm just gonna delete that. So we're accessing the information right away as opposed to accessing the index and going back into the name length. So student name and then name length. So now we have access to all the information we need for this program and I can actually delete this line of code right here. So I save a line of code, makes it much more elegant, less clumsy and if I go ahead and run it, we should get the same thing, which is very nice. So try to use zip when you have two lists of similar information that you're looping through that have the same length one thing important to know about zip is that it does truncate. It can be a little destructive. So unless you absolutely know that both lists or all the lists you're trying to zip have the same length, don't use it. And I could show you an example real quick of why that's the case. So let's say some new student enters the class and he has a really long name. So let's say students dot append here. Um, some student with a long name. So we know based on the logic of the program that this person should be the winner of this list, get the longest name, get the max count. Well, if we go ahead and run through this, we'll see that's not the case. And it's because once we append to students here, we see that 
this is a, a list of length five, and now this becomes a list of length four. So what zip's going to do, it's going to truncate based on the shortest list, which in this case is name length. So it'll never get to some student with a long name. And that's essentially an error in our program, a silent error, which can be destructive. So be really careful when you use zip. It is a nice, concise way to avoid the problem I showed you earlier, where we're iterating through one list and accessing another list. But it can be somewhat destructive if you're working with it indiscretionally. So let's jump into point number three, guys. Okay, last thing I'm gonna share in this tutorial, part three, is avoid else blocks after four and while loops. And the first thing you're probably thinking, actually the first thing I'm thinking is, why is this called hello world.py? That's weird, sorry about that. But the, the first thing you're probably thinking is that, how the heck do we have else after four? Like that doesn't make any sense. And I just learned this recently that you could do this in Python. And this is actually, in 99% of the cases, this is an anti-pattern, you shouldn't be doing this. So I just wanted to share this with you guys that you shouldn't do else statements after a for loop or a while loop. And how that works is that if we're going through a for loop like this and we wanna print, let's say the range, correct? Let's say we wanna print all these ranges and we have this else statement. Now you think intuitively that, what does this else statement mean? Maybe if we had like a break statement, if I equals equals five, break, and then that'll trigger the else statement. But in reality, that's the opposite. The else statement in for loops and while loops is triggered if the whole loop is exhausted. So if I go ahead and run this right now, the else statement's not gonna be exhausted. Or the for loop's not gonna be exhausted, we're not gonna see the else statement. But if I run through the whole list, that's when we'll see the else statement of a for loop triggered, okay? We hit the else statement. So that's an instance where the else statement for a for loop would work or in a while loop would be the same thing. But generally in most cases, there's very highly specific cases that you'd wanna use this. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, just know the main point of this point three is you can use else for, for for loops and while loops, so you can have for and else, surprisingly. So if you did learn a fun fact there, just like, comment, subscribe, because I thought that was pretty cool. In a majority of the cases, that is an anti-pattern, so you wanna to try to remove that. There are very specific edge cases where you want to use that. I haven't seen that in practice. So just throwing that out there. If you did learn anything from this video, absolutely anything, please like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you want to see in the upcoming videos. As usual, stay tuned. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night. I'm making this video late. I'm tired now. So I'm just going to take it easy. Peace out.